Hello guys and welcome back to 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors. In the last episode, if you don't remember, a lot of stuff happened. We found the number 9 door, and it seemed like this was the happiest possible, the happiest possible route. And then suddenly, Santa pulled out a gun, he held June hostage, and he brought Ace and Lotus with him, uh, as well as June, through the number 9 door. And so now we just leave behind uh, Junpei, Clover, and Seven. Obviously, five plus four is nine, plus seven is sixteen, one plus six is seven. You know the drill. Point is, we cannot get through the number nine door. And so, Seven leaves us with this very pertinent question. What do you want to do, Junpei? What do you mean, what do I want to do? What can we do? Seven opened his mouth to respond when... A noise echoed throughout the room. Someone was pounding on something vigorously. It wasn't mechanical. It was certainly human. Junpei and Seven looked at one another. W what the hell's that? Shh! Quiet! Clover motioned to, Se to Seven to be quiet. She put one finger to her lips and closed her eyes in concentration. The three of them listened, trying to determine where the sound was coming from. Where... where was it coming from? Could it be... Hey, I think it's coming from this coffin. You're right. Let's open it. But how? What are those muscles for? For show? You're telling me to force it open? Just shut up and try. Junpei and Seven grabbed hold of the coffin. They tried to get a good grip with what little purchase they could find, and pulled with all their strength. Damn it! Man, it won't even budge. There was some sort of keypad attached to the coffin. Its purpose would not have been difficult to determine. Their eyes were almost immediately drawn to it. Not another one. Yeah, it looks like it. Do you think we can put in the right password or it won't open? I think so. The noise wasn't stopping. In fact, it was getting louder. They had no idea who was in the coffin, but they wanted out. And they wanted out now. They had no idea what they were supposed to do. Without a passcode, it didn't seem like there was a lot they could do. They couldn't even tell how many numbers the passcode needed to be. Isn't there a hint somewhere? Well, let's look for one. Unfortunately, there didn't seem to be anything near the coffin. Clover ran to examine the pews, and Seven investigated the desk, but they turned up nothing. The sound still wouldn't stop. It wasn't a noise that belonged in that room. What was the passcode? What was Junpei supposed to do? How was he supposed to figure it out? He needed... Something. The world blinked. Suddenly there was a voice inside of Junpei's head. Truth had gone, truth had gone, and truth had gone. Ah, uh, now truth is asleep in the darkness of the sinister hand. What? What the hell was that? That voice? Junpei was utterly and completely baffled. Huh? What are you talking about? What's up? Seven and Clover ran over to him, but Junpei didn't know what to tell them. If he told them he'd heard a voice, they'd laugh, or worse, think he was going insane. So all he said was, Oh, nothing. He cleared his throat a little too loud and looked pointedly down at his bracelet. There were a pair of small buttons protruding from either side of it. Junpei pressed the buttons on the bracelet. Now here's a really cool part. We know from a different route that the correct way to press the buttons is right, left, right, left, right, left. That was detective work that Junpei had done in a completely different route. 
right left, right left, right left. That was it. Eight numbers blinked on and then off of the bracelet display. Junpei checked one last time. One, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. One, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. Huh? Eh? Hey, what the hell was those numbers? Oh my gosh, are those? Junpei didn't answer. He simply walked straight to the coffin. He knelt down in front of the keypad, running over the numbers in his head so that he wouldn't forget. One, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. One, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. With trembling fingers, he punched them in. One, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. That was all of them. He punched the E button. There was a moment of complete silence. Then there was the sound of the coffin lid unlatching. Someone sat up out of it. Uh, ah! Oh, is that you, Clover? I apologize for worrying you. Snake! Oh my... How did you... Junpei, and Seven, is that you? Is everyone else there as well? Just like Rip Van Winkle. Still, it was much, very much like Snake to simply cut to the heart of the matter and ask. Junpei and Seven shared a wry smile. Clover's eyes were filled with tears. Yeah, you're back! With a cry of joy, she leapt into Snake's arms. Gently now. My body's still a little weak. You're back! You're back! Clover looked like nothing so much as a lost child who'd finally found her home. She cried and cried and cried. Her eyes were red and her nose was running. She hiccuped and gasped as if she were about to begin hyperventilating. You're back! You're really here! Her voice was happy but almost desperate, as if she feared he would disappear again if she stopped talking to him. Tear after tremendous tear rolled its way down her face. Her small arms strained as she clutched Snake's body as tightly as she could. Perhaps she had to convince herself he was real. Perhaps she was worried he would be gone the moment she let go. Perhaps she simply didn't know what else to do. Oh, you're back! Come now, what's gotten into you? You're acting as though I've returned from the grave. Not as though, you did! I really thought you were dead! Huh? You jerk! Idiot, idiot, idiot! Clover broke into sobs so great she could no longer talk. It was a touching reunion between brother and sister. Even though Junpei knew what had, l even though Junpei knew they had little time, and every minute they waited was a minute they wasted, it felt cruel to pull them apart. Junpei and Seven sat down on one of the pews, waiting for Clover to calm down before explaining to Snake what had transpired. I see. I believe I understand things rather well now, thank you. In the shower room, there is a dead body wearing my clothes. Because of that, you thought I was dead. Correct? You had quickly and neatly summarized the events of several hours. Junpei nodded. You also discovered a corpse in the captain's quarters, and Santa turned on you here in this room. Do I have it straight? Seven had been rather surprised to learn of the dead body in the captain's quarters. With everything that had taken place, Junpei had simply forgotten to mention it to him. Well then, I've got a pretty decent idea of what happened while I was dispo indisposed, but it's still something of a mystery to who d did all this and why. The corpse in the shower room that looked like me, and the corpse in the captain's quarters. Why were they killed in that way, in the way that they were? You don't know? No. Why would I? The guy in the shower room. We don't know who he is, so let's just call him Mr. X. Anyway, this Mr. X is wearing Snake's clothes, but you're wearing some kind of weird robes. That means someone took your clothes and put them on Mr. X. We need to figure out who that was. I apologize, but I have no idea who might have done this to me. I only just now woke up. 
I was unconscious during all the events you just described to me. They must have undressed me and changed my clothes during that time. When were you knocked out? When we split up to look for the red. Oh, where did they get you? Do you remember? It was a small room in one of the hallways on C-Deck. What happened? The same thing that had happened to everyone when one of us were abducted. A can releasing some sort of gas was thrown into the room. I believe the gas is some sort of incapacitating agent. Then, that means it was... Zero. Looks that way, huh? There's nothing else I have to tell you. When I woke up, I was in this coffin. Jinpei crossed his arms and thought. Why had Zero made Mr. X wear Snake's clothes? How had the results of that trick benefited Zero? It was a mystery. Junpei couldn't make sense of it. He also didn't have a satisfactory explanation for how he dis discerned the key code for the coffin. It just didn't make sense. Truth had gone, truth had gone, and truth had gone. What did that mean? Did it mean anything? And why had Junpei felt compelled to push the buttons on the bracelet after hearing them? Seven had asked him about it while they were waiting for Clover to finish crying. He had no answer for him then, and he still didn't. All he could say was that it seemed to have been a subconscious reaction. His fingers had simply moved of their own accord. It was the only explanation that made any sort of sense, and it made almost no sense. Junpei had no idea what any of it meant. His mind was a maelstrom of mysteries, clues, and theories, more and more mysteries. He could barely think. And of course, Snake and Clover had been subjects in a similar experiment nine years ago. The ability to access morphogenetic field is affected by a couple of things. The first is epiphany and the other is danger. And... And... Someone did... Actually die. A girl. Her name was... Um... There had been another experiment conducted on the sh on the same ship nine years ago. A girl had died during it. Morphogenetic field theory. The two murders. Switching clothes. The Nonary game. And whatever strange thing was happening to Junpei himself. The maelstrom in his head spat out words and ideas that disappeared back into it as almost as soon as he grasped them. But as he struggled through them, Junpei began to realize something. There was something that tied all of them together. Zero. He was the ringleader. The person who trapped nine people on a sinking ship. Zero knew everything. If they could uncover Zero's identity, all of their questions would be answered. Who's Zero? Junpei had the beginnings of a theory. We could only test it. Or perhaps. At any rate, we'll have plenty of time to decipher the details later. For now, it is of utmost importance that we escape. Junpei, it was 4.30 the last time you checked the clock, yes? That means we have less than an hour. We must hurry. Hey, uh, how are we gonna get out of here? Isn't that obvious? Through the other number 9 door. 5 plus 4 plus 7 plus 2 equals 18. 1 plus 8 equals 9. Oh! Oh yeah! Yeah, you're right! With Snake, we can open the door! Don't tell me you hadn't figured that out. As they sniped back and forth, Junpei glanced at Snake's left hand. He was wearing a bracelet with a 2 on it. Come on, you gotta tell me these things! I, uh, assumed you'd figured it out. Gah, forget it. Let's just get going. Seven stomped off toward the smaller number nine door. Clover, Snake, and Junpei followed. Seven quickly laid his hand on the red. An asterisk appeared on the screen. Junpei and the others followed suit and laid their hands on the scanner panel. Soon, there were four asterisks on the screen. Seven glanced at them and laid his hand on the lever of the red. All right. You guys ready to go? Yes. Yep. Junpei paused for a moment. Not yet. Huh? Before we go in, I'd like to check something. 
you want to check something. Yeah, but before I do, Seven, could you pull the lever? I want to make sure we can verify with just the four of us. What do you mean? We don't need... Just do it, all right? But if the door opens, don't go in yet, okay? Please. This is really important. I really need to check this, okay? Work with me here. Junpei looked directly into Seven's eyes. The older man looked back for a moment, then nodded. Fine. Seven pulled down on the lever and the door nine creaked open. Then they waited. Six, seven, eight. After nine seconds, the door closed. All right, that means the four of us can go into door nine. So? We knew that already, it's obvious. Obvious? Yeah, you're right, it is. Now what happens if we add Zero's bracelet? What? Zero- Zero's... Bracelet? Why don't you take it out, Clover? For a moment, Clover looked surprised, but she recovered quickly and struck her hand- and stuck her tongue out at Junpei. <laughs> so you did know I had it. I picked it up because I thought it might be useful sometime. She reached into one of the pockets of her voluminous jacket and produced the bracelet. Junpei took it from her and turned to Seven. This was in the left hand of the corpse of the captain's quarters. If you look at it, you can see it's got a zero on the face. Just to make this a little easier to talk about, I'm going to call the guy we found dead in the captain's quarters, Cap. If Cap was really zero, then I should be able to open door nine with just me, Clover, and his bracelet. 5 plus 4 plus 0 equals 9. But most importantly, if you were Cap and this was your game, would you really put one of these bracelets on yourself? Anyway, let's just give it a shot. Uh, Clover, give me your hand. Uh, okay. After he and Clover scanned their bracelets, he waved Caps over the scanner panel. Then he pulled the lever. However... The door didn't open. The red display read error. I knew it. Now, what does this tell us? Maybe the bracelet has to be in your wrist in order for it to work? No, that's impossible. Did you see how the panel showed a third asterisk when I scanned Cap's bracelet? Whether or not it's on your wrist doesn't matter. All you have to do is put the bracelet near the panel for it to register. Seven waved his bracelet in front of the scanner panel. Sure enough, a single asterisk appeared on the red. Huh. Looks like you're right. See? Though, what does that mean? There's only one possibility. The bracelet isn't the number zero. Is that what you're saying? That's right. Then, what number is it? Let's find out. Junpei scanned the bracelet with this combination. So, I believe from the previous playthrough, it was Snake, Junpei, and Cap. Snake plus Junpei, Snake plus Junpei plus Cap. 2 plus 5 equals 7. This combination opened the door, then Cap's bracelet was a number 2. Actually, I don't believe that's... Ah, crap. The door didn't open. Cap's number wasn't 2. Junpei proceeded to scan the bracelet with this combination. 7 plus Junpei plus Cap. This combination opened the door, then Cap's bracelet was the number 6. Hey! It opened! The door opened! What? Why? What does that mean? Both Seven and Clover seemed rather shaken, as they turned to look at Junpei for answers. The door slid heavily shut. Junpei raised an eyebrow. Isn't it obvious? Cap's bracelet is number 6. 7 plus 5 plus 6 equals 18, 1 plus 8 equals 9. But, doesn't it say 0? 
This isn't a zero. The symbol on here isn't a number zero. It's a letter O. O! Whoa, wait a minute! I don't get it. <laughs> I mean, we figured out Cap's bracelet is six, right? Yeah. Does that mean there are two people with sixes? Before Junpei could answer, Snake spoke up. There is, most likely, only one person with a six. But I don't get it. What about June? Well, this is only an educated guess, but I think June's number was never six to begin with. Her bracelet was flipped. In other words, June's real number is... Nine? That seems the most likely. And all this numbered door stuff was just a load of crap? Why would you say that? Because! If June is nine, then the numbers wouldn't match up. Clover grabbed Junpei's number and began to write furiously in it. Junpei leaned over to look at it. List of all the numbered doors June's gone through. Clover read each row out loud so that Snake could follow along. Alright, I made a list of all the numbered doors that June has gone through so far. I wrote down which door she went into and with who. And I wrote down that all the number what all the numbers were. So if you switch 9 in wherever there's a 6, the numbers don't work. If the digital root is 7, then you can't open the door 4. If the digital root is 2, then you can't open the door 8. Clover, do you notice anything interesting on that list? What do you mean? You're talk. You're talking about three, right? Three? Santa's always in the room with her. That's what you're saying, isn't it? Yes, exactly. What about it? That's quite simple, really. You told me that the first time you came to this room, Santa was the first to refuse to leave June behind. Now, doesn't that beg the question of why? Why would Santa do such a thing? The answer is easy. Because Santa can't open door 9 with only 7 and Lotus. Of course, there's only run one reason for that. His number isn't actually 3. Santa's real number... 7, would you be so kind as to modify my sister's equations? Yeah, sure. 7 took the pen from a confused clover and began to adjust her calculations. This is what you were getting at, right, Snake? He read out the changes he'd made. When he'd finished, he looked at Snake. Snake smiled. Thank you. That is exactly right, Seven. Santa's true number wasn't three. It was zero. No way! Santa's... zero? And June was nine, not six. On the contrary, Santa was zero, not three. Plus three and minus three. They cancel out one another. Nothing appears out of order. Then, that means that even though he set up the whole damn thing, Santa was still playing by the rules of the nonary game the whole time. Precisely. So you're saying Santa played this whole thing? Or planned this whole thing? I'm not sure if he acted alone or not, but I think it is safe to conclude that he is zero. If my hypothesis is correct. Clover bit her lip. She seemed to be having some difficulty believing her brother's explanation. Junpei. Junpei remained silent and thought. Snake's hypothesis didn't satisfy him. June's bracelet was flipped. Even if that were possible, then there would have been two number nine bracelets. And if that were the case... Alright, that's enough talking. Let's go. It's high time that we went through that door. Door 9 opened. They leapt through. The dead was directly in front of them as they came through the door. Quickly, they scanned their bracelets. And the detonator stopped. Whew! After pausing for a moment to catch their collective breath, Junpei and his companions headed down the long hallway in front of them. At the end was a set of stairs leading down into the ship. It looked as though they led all the way to the bottom deck. They looked down. It didn't seem to be flooded. 
After deciding it was safe, they headed down the stairs. Before long, Jim and his companions found themselves on the bottom deck. They turned left into another hallway at the end of which they found another door. And of course, there was a symbol engraved on the keyhole. It looked like the sort of harpoon one, one would use to hunt fish, the kind with three prongs. Snake traced the shape of it with his fingers. This is the Neptune symbol. There must be a key around here somewhere. Neptune key. All Junpei had was the Uranus key card. Not the same planet, not even the same sort of key. Clearly, it wasn't going to open this door. After examining the door for a few more minutes, they gave up and headed back to the, w to the way they'd come. With a little more searching, they found a metal door. To the side of it was a card reader. A symbol was engraved into the card reader. It matched the Uranus symbol on the key card Junpei was carrying. This is the place! He muttered to himself and slid the card through the reader. It beeped once and the light on it turned green. With a heavy metal groan, the door creaked open. Junpei, Clover, Snake, and Seven looked at one another, nodded, and stepped through. The room they found themselves in was full of books. It looked remarkably like a library. Not the sort of library where large numbers of people came to read books, more of the sort of library that was simply a place to store books. He felt a little overwhelmed by the sheer number of books, but Junpei did his best to speak with authority. Alright, if we want to get through that door out there, we need the Neptune key. I say we split up and look for it. Okay. Very well. Sure thing. Good. Let's get started then. We don't have a lot of time. Hurry. Alice sleeps in a chamber past the Forest of Knowledge. As he began his search for reasons he didn't fully understand, Junpei felt those particular words flow through his mind. And that's gonna be it for this episode. So much stuff has been happening the last couple of episodes. There's a lot of weird stuff that happened, uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye!